Hello there, my fellow children of the stars, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k lore. The topic of today is one of those relatively rare ones on my channel that doesn't really belong in any specialized topic, unless you want to make the Imperium as a whole a topic. It is also a subject that might seem quite bland until you realize we never actually described it in detail before. Ladies and gentlemen, Today we're gonna say a few words about the so-called Voidborn, aka the people who are not born on a planet, but on an Imperial starship. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Voidborn, in a nutshell, are indeed the people who get born and live most, if not their entire lives, in space on a vessel. Now, to you or me, that doesn't seem that unusual. Unfortunately, the Voidborn are often considered to be touched by the warp by many people. After all, they are born and spend most of their lives traveling in and out of the Immaterium. And if not that, at least associated with the many and unfathomable dangers of the Outer Darkness by the common masses of the Imperial citizens. Most of them are considered bringers of bad fortune and ill tidings, secretive and untrustworthy. Goes without saying that the Imperial fleet, and or navy, is a vital factor in the maintenance of the Imperium itself. Without it, worlds would be isolated from each other and left unprotected. Without it, trade would not exist, and weapons and armies could not be brought where they are needed. Without it, world after world would fall into darkness. Space travel throughout the Imperium is, even in the best of times, dangerous and arduous. Most interstellar travel is undertaken using powerful ancient engines which push a vessel into the Immaterium, which is also known as the Imperium or the Warp. Within the Warp, a starship can cover many thousands of light years in a relatively short amount of time dropping back into the Materium far beyond the starting point. Some parts of the warp, however, act as powerful vortices which can drag helpless vessels to their doom. There's also the constant danger of turbulence, warp storms, and temporal loops. A starship can be thrown thousands of light years off course or be trapped in stasis forever. Or, most bizarrely, they can emerge years or even centuries after or before they left. In the warp there is neither time nor distance, only the flowing streams of psychic energy that comprise the Immaterium itself. On board a void ship in the warp, a single month may pass, but in the material realm anything from six months to several years may elapse. Fleet responding to distress calls and supply vessels on long voyages have been known to arrive solar months or even years too late. Those who live their lives on void ships become, to a lesser or greater extent, become used to the reality-bending process of warp travel, and to the living in the low or zero-gravity environments and never knowing the feel of solid earth beneath their feet. Many vessels in the Imperium never make birth, their crews instead raising generations of families in the cold depths of space, where things like gravitational variants, radiation, genetic distortion, and warp anomalies will surely take a toll. What true effect these stains have on individual voidborn humans is uncertain and quite varied, but there is definitely something strange about many of them. In many cases their features are drawn and their skin pallid, and they may have some deformities, or an oddness of speech and gait, or a general appearance setting them apart from the others. Some, although outwardly normal, carry a strange aura about them, something not quite right about them, which makes others around them uneasy. Many Voidborn are raised on huge void asteroid mining installations or battlefield refit stations, or machine-called research platforms. But the most of their number comes from a variety of backgrounds aboard active star vessels, be they the crew of merchants, warships, miners, scavengers, prison ships, or even rogue traders. Now, if you know anything about space travel in 40k, it is that the vessels are gigantic. 
with imperial vessels being among the biggest. They are veritable cities in space, many of which are also thousands of years old. On these huge vessels, lobotomized servitors and tech adepts move about their mysterious business, while the menial crew, the passengers or guilders, coexist in crowded vaults, in lonely corridors and cramped quarters. The Vordborn that were raised in the service of the Imperial Navy, or among the crew of a rogue trader, definitely have experience on the horrors of space and the sheer multitude of the enemies of the Emperor. This knowledge often forces voidfarers of the lower decks into insular brotherhoods, afraid to look outside their duty or small society for fear of what might be lurking outside the hull. Of course, that is not to say that every crew member of a vessel, maybe outside the captain, is doomed to a slow death via privation or servitude. Many of the crew, especially among those who are skilled enough to make themselves vital to a ship's function, will adapt to their life among the stars, and maybe even thrive. Those voidborn learn to love the countless corridors and passageways of a vessel, all the way from the plasma drive to the pointy prow. It also helps that many captains afford their crew a certain latitude which is not granted to the masses of ratings. In exchange for their specialized skill, they are given bigger quarters, better food, the opportunity for shore leave at a friendly port, and even the dispensation to form a relationship and a family. Often, these families in turn will pass down that duty, and the knowledge to perform that duty from parent to child. For example, on the rogue trader vessel Star Weaver, all the launch bay door operators on the starboard side belong to the Orel clan a situation that has stayed in place for 300 years. On a starship gun decks, each macro cannon may be crewed by a different family, and all the macro cannons, so to say, could be embroiled in a complex web of feuds, alliances, and tiny wars. Often, a good crew chief or bosun is an indispensable asset, precisely because they are the only ones who can navigate the labyrinthine political webs among the thousands of the ship's crew. Now, this might sound complicated and tedious and not very effective, but it does have advantages as well. The main one being that the crew of a vessel like this will train itself. Invaluable knowledge is passed down the generations, carefully preserved so that the families, in their turn, may preserve their privilege and pride among the other crew. With that being said, there are some risks as well. To protect their valued positions, these crew dynasties often make certain that their knowledge of how to operate this or that will remain a secret known only within their family. So long as they remain aboard a vessel and at their post, that is not a problem. But should the status quo change, a ship could find itself in a dangerous position. For example, the rogue trader vessel Cerberus nearly lost an entire family crew to a catastrophic decompression in the aft deck. The family was responsible for regulating coolant lines to the ship's secondary plasma drive. Had the ship's seneschal not called for the clan's 12-year-old son to serve as a message runner, not one soul aboard the Cerberus would have known where the emergency purge valves were, and the entire vessel could have suffered catastrophic drive failure. It will definitely not come as a surprise to you that many spacefaring vessels in the galaxy, both great and small, have dark reputations. Although all starships have some kind of history, and not many of them are pleasant, many have darker secrets and half-abandoned depths. These vessels, some of them ancient and legendary in their own right, ply the void between the stars, and often hold a deeper darkness within covered in stories of curses, ill omens, bleak fortune, baleful massacre, cannibalism, hauntings, and even worse. The Voidborn do have a name for such vessels, and it is the Darkholds. And those that hail from one of these can find a berth nowhere else, outside of an equally ill-reputed place. They are shunned and considered to be unlucky and ill-fated even by their kind. Although such distinctions are often lost on the outsiders who cannot tell one Voidborn from another, those that spend much of their lives sealed between the hulls of a great vessel will fear the Darkholds, 
mistrust those that call them home, and hold protective talismans when they are close. The Darkholders are a breed apart even from the Voidborn. They are lean and hungry, with the cold black dancing in their eyes. The Calixis Sector in particular has several notorious Darkholds of its own. From the gargantuan and blood-drenched Bountiful Beast, to the blackly storied far trader Blinded Saint, whose seven-year course took it into the reaches of the Hazard of Abyss, to the sinister Grand Mausoleum Barge called Pale Sepulchre, and the infamous naval battlecruiser Chalice of Fire. That one was recovered empty and adrift centuries ago, and taken back into service by the Imperial Navy. Although it is said to be haunted by the thousands of souls of her former crew, which had disappeared without trace when the vessel was found. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Void Board of the Imperium, their quirks and fears, and the dark holes for today. Can't say I would really enjoy spending my entire life aboard an Imperial vessel. But given how many Imperials travel the stars, regardless of allegiance, having Voidborn families is inevitable. And at the end of the day, they are people too. What about you? Would you enjoy a life spent traveling through the stars of the 40k galaxy? What are your thoughts on the Voidborn? Do share any thoughts or opinions on their society in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor protects.